You have a diamond. Yes, you. A beat up house in a hot part of town. A diamond in the rough. You called up the owner and instead of cussing you out, she called you over for muffins and agrees to sell you the house. There's tens of thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands of upside in this deal. And you are actually dreading the idea of wholesaling it for just 10 or $15,000. But you don't have the cash to flip it yourself. In swoops the hard money lender who doesn't care about your tax returns or your credit score, but who knows you've got a great deal and is offering the cash to help you make it happen. The only problem, sky high interest rates, extra fees and origination charges, and a six month timeline to get it all done. But the cash is there. Are you gonna take it? This is the part where most of us start thinking about would all of the high fees and interest rates ruin our deal? How do we know if this hard money lender is even legit? And if they are, what are their expectations of us our first time using a hard money loan? Well, let's all take a deep breath. Hard money loans are scary, but they don't have to be. And to prove it to you, I interviewed my hard money lender and asked him your questions, and I'm gonna share it with you all today. If you stay to the end of this video, you will leave confident knowing how hard money loans actually work, how to approach a hard money lender with a deal, even if you're brand new to investing, and how to know when hard money is your best option or when you can find better sources of funding elsewhere. My goal is to make this the best hard money loan video on YouTube, and if at the end you feel like I delivered on that promise, leave your favorite emoji in the comment section. What is a hard money lender? What is hard money? How does it differ from some other types of financing options that are out there? We are strictly bridge lenders. So we're going to be doing six to 12 month financing, uh, but emphasis on quick, reliable funding. That's Jake, my hard money lender. And when he says that his company is a bridge lender, it means that they offer you a loan that helps you buy the property and then is like a bridge over the renovation process until you can get 15 to 30 year long-term money. You're about to see Jake do an amazing job of answering a ton of your questions, but listen to me closely. He's just one hard money lender in one area of the country. This video is not telling you he's the only hard money lender out there who's good at what he does or that you should specifically try to work with him. He may not even do loans in the area where you live. This video is meant to give you some insight and behind the scenes information about how to find the best hard money loan that works for you. Now, if that's from Jake, Great, glad to have made the introduction. And if not, there are literally hundreds, maybe thousands of hard money lenders out there that you're gonna know how to reach out to and how to work with them after you watch this video. Capiche? Kaposh. So we know that hard money allows you to get short-term financing, but why is it so expensive and how the heck could you ever make a deal work paying that much? Remember that diamond in the rough you found at the beginning of this video? Let's use the house flipper formula to see how good of a deal you've actually got. The ARV or after repair value of this property after you fix it up is say $200,000. Just go with it, I'm using easily mathable numbers. It works pretty much the same whether you pay 20,000, 200,000, or two million. Most house flippers will multiply the ARV by 70% and then subtract their renovation budget, which we can call $50,000 in this case. That would give you a maximum allowable offer of $90,000 for this particular property. But the seller has agreed to sell it to you for $50,000, meaning you've got a home run deal. You just don't have the $50,000 in cash to buy it or the $50,000 in cash to fix it up. You need $100,000. And here is where hard money comes in. You're likely to be able to get most of that $100,000 that you need, but there are gonna be typically three types of fees involved. First, you're gonna have your interest rate. This is the rate that the hard money lender charges on the loan that they give you. Let's say they loan you $80,000 with a 12% interest rate. Well, you would take that $80,000 times 12%, but that's gonna give you an annual interest payment. And so you wanna divide that by 12 to see what your monthly payment would be, which in this case would be $800 easily mathable numbers. You'd then multiply that $800 by the three, four, five, six months that you think the project would take you, and that would tell you how much interest you'd have to pay on the loan. The second type of fee you've got are points, and these are another charge that is related to the loan. Typically, one point is one percentage of the loan amount. So if it's an $80,000 loan, they're gonna charge you four points, you would take $80,000, you can multiply it by 1% since you know one point is 1% of the loan and then multiply that by four. 
that would give you a charge just for the points of $3,200. And on top of all that, you might also have a third charge called an origination fee, and this is a percentage of the loan that they're giving you. Let's say it's 2%, so you would take your $80,000 times 2%, for an origination fee of $1,600. With a loan that expensive, you've got to ask, how could you still make a deal work paying that much? As we know, the traditional banks are going to have their appraisal process, their inspection process, their underwriting process, their loan committee process, all of which are fine. But when you need to make a quick decision and know that you can pull the trigger on a deal, you got to have a hard money or alternative lender there at your side to allow you to close fast on a deal and to give you the comfort right. that they'll get you to the finish line to grow your portfolio. Jake's point here is a good one. Traditional loans can take upwards of 30 days to close and hard money is typically much quicker. Banks also typically don't like lending on beat up properties and it's rare that you're gonna find a traditional bank that has a loan product that gives you money for both the purchase and the renovation in the way that a hard money loan does. And finally, we all know that banks have super strict requirements on the debt to income, your two years of job history, your credit score, and other metrics like your debt to income ratio. Hard Money, on the other hand, has a reputation for being much less strict on your personal financials, and they're much more into considering the quality of the deal. Um, some people may feel they don't fit the profile, or they may, they may have been turned down by a traditional bank, and they're, now they're kind of questioning whether or not they qualify for lending at all. The biggest thing to know is, with a Hard Money lender, with us specifically, you know, experience obviously is great because that gives us more confidence, and that allows us to open up our playbook a little bit more and, and maybe be more flexible with the terms of offer. But if you're new and you want somebody to give you a chance, a lot of times an alternative lender can be that that place. We'll give you the chance to start building your your own portfolio of, you know, here's a project I did, because then you can go to a lender and say, look, I did this project and this project. And this is how they turned out. And then all of a sudden the lender starts to listen to you. So when Jake says here, you can do a few deals with hard money and then go to a lender, he means go to a traditional bank lender. And I found this to be true. It's really hard to walk in the door at a traditional bank as a first timer and get them to take you seriously. But if you've got a few deals under your belt with a hard money loan, even though the loan was a little bit more expensive, you can then go to the traditional bank and qualify for a less expensive loan just because you can show them some experience. Many new investors, including myself, do their first deal or their first few deals with hard money. Because even though it's expensive, it can be the best way to get your foot in the door and then later on you can transition into using other types of loans that are a lot less expensive. We'll come back to our deal and do all of the numbers to show how it works with those fees attached, but if you're considering hard money, one question you might have is when should you approach the hard money lender? Should you do it now or should you wait until you actually have a deal? We can go either way, um, but again, if you are walking a property and you want to send an address to your lender first, again, just like on a prequal, we can give you the comfort that we like the deal and we'd be willing to help you. Um, right. Because if we say maybe we don't like that or it's too expensive to, you know, as an investment, that's going to give you some additional information to talk about when you walk through. I think my recommendation here would depend on where you are in your journey, but either way, you should reach out now. It just differs on how you might want to do it. If you're just getting started and you don't actually have any deals that you would realistically try to offer on or try to close on in the near future, then you want to reach out in like the general way. Just telling the hard money lender about yourself and asking them what are some of their requirements and what are they looking for when they're giving loans. This way, you can start to get things in order and wrap your mind around what's going to be necessary so that when you do find a deal, you can move on it. And if you are actively finding deals, you should take a good one and send it to a hard money lender to see what they think and give you the go ahead on, hey, yes, we'd be willing to do this deal with you and here are the requirements that we would have. People always ask me where to find good hard money lenders and my recommendation is going to be the same for basically anything about real estate. Google, Facebook groups, and biggerpockets.com. There are national lenders and you can go onto their websites and you can read reviews. And there's also local lenders and you wanna do the same thing with them. National lenders are probably gonna be a little bit cheaper because they're operating at such a large scale. And the local lenders are probably gonna be a little bit more expensive, but also probably more flexible because it's gonna be more personalized to you and your market. 
But yes, always read reviews, read comments, Google their name. And when you do speak with someone, ask if there's a place that you can hear from other investors who have worked with you. They might have a Facebook group or they might be able to put you in touch with someone. And although hard money lenders still look at you as an individual, here's what Jake had to say about the deal being the most important thing. Our biggest emphasis is the deal itself and the person doing the deal, the character. Um, and so with that in mind, you know, that first deal is definitely more is the deal itself. And that's one of our checklist items, you know, that we will talk about it. And we've uh, even before the deal you and I closed, we had that conversation about our previous deal that we ended up not getting done. Uh, but, you know, are you really getting a good deal? And, and this is a very subjective question. Because everybody's, you know, again, it's that emotions, that emotional thing we talked about earlier, where sometimes you just so badly want to get into a deal that subjectively you may not see the numbers not working as well as you really think they're going to. So that's really going to be as an alternative lender, hard money, you know, that asset that you're purchasing is really going to be the key to the deal. Now, I will warn you, one of the scary things about hard money is it can feel very cold and transactional. Like you don't know these people, they don't know you, it's just they have money that you want and they're gonna charge you to use it. Contracts and rules and dates and invoices. I asked Jake about it and here's what he had to say. It's a business transaction, so there, there has to be sound numbers, uh, but Within those sound numbers, there's the, the conversation about, well, how do we get to those numbers? So although hard money loans are transactional, I find that one good thing is because they're looking at so many deals and lending out so much money, they've actually got their system for identifying a good deal pinpointed probably better than you and I do. So if they do give you the thumbs up on a deal, that should be a stroke of confidence for you moving forward. And the first deal that I actually sent Jake, he let me know we want investors who work with us to make this amount of money and we just don't think this is a good enough deal for you to make the return that's gonna make it worth it and gonna make it a safe bet. And so they turned me down for that one and it actually was kind of comforting that they weren't going to let me go into a bad deal because they don't want me going into a bad deal with their money. That's something that I appreciate appreciated about our process was that at the end of the day, we both want this deal to be successful because it's a business transaction for both of us. And if it's successful, then we both get the return that we're looking for. And the questions that you're asking just help to make sure that it's a solid deal, right? Like what are the rents going to be? What's the rehab? What's the contingency if this goes wrong? You know, and these are all things that it's, it's not mentorship, but it's, it's a partnership in some ways. Because like you guys even came out to the property before we closed on it and I got the chance to ask, you know, hey, these are some guys that are a little bit more experienced. They're looking at the deal from this angle. What do you see? Maybe what am I missing? I got to share my thoughts on, hey, here's a place we can add value, et cetera, et cetera. And so I think as long as the, the goal at the end of the day is to make a su successful deal and for both of us to get a return, then that automatically puts us you know, on the same page. Speaking of deals, let's think back to our diamond in the rough. We need $100,000 to successfully flip it and sell it for $200,000. And let's say that the hard money lender agrees to give you 80% of the purchase price and 100% of the renovation. So you'd need to put down $10,000 for the down payment on the purchase and then they'd give you the other $90,000 for the rest of the purchase and the full rehab. Side note, if you're worried about needing to come up with money for a down payment, hear me out. No money deals are very uncommon for beginners and are actually really dangerous in my opinion. The money that you put down is your safety net. It's your equity. If you borrow 100% of the money needed, you're on the hook for paying 100% of it back. Things need to go perfectly. If you borrow 80% of the money needed, you've got a 20% cushion to screw up and lose your own money, which is a lot easier to recover from than losing the hard money lenders money and having them foreclose on you and put that on your record permanently. So anyway, you put down $10,000 and they loan you $90,000 at 12% interest. So $90,000 times 12% divided by 12 months gives you $900 per month. Let's imagine this deal takes you three months. That's $2,700 in interest. They charge you two points, so $1,800 there. And then they also charge you a 2% origination fee, so another $1,800. So all in all, this hard money loan is gonna cost you $6,300. Ouch. But remember, they are loaning you $90,000. If we put that into a formula, we plan to sell our house for $200,000. We subtract the $50,000 we bought it for and the $50,000 we put into the renovation. So we're at $100,000. 
dollars. Then we've also got to subtract the six thousand three hundred dollars that came from the interest and all of the fees to the hard money lender. And let's subtract, say, another fifteen hundred dollars for the holding costs, things like utilities and any other closing costs that came from doing the loan. We're down to ninety eight thousand five hundred dollars. And let's say that when you go to sell the property for two hundred thousand dollars at the end of the deal, you're probably going to have to pay six percent for the realtor fees. So you take off another twelve thousand, putting us at eighty six thousand five hundred dollars. Uncle Sam's going to want forty percent of that. And so we've got a profit of fifty one thousand nine hundred dollars on our flip. $51,900 of profit when you only had to put in $10,000 of your own money is a $519,000 return on investment. Now, yes, these numbers were picked for easy math and to expose one key point. Hard money loans require good deals. They are expensive. And to make it work, you've got to learn to find good deals. And this is why I'm glad that I started my investing journey with wholesaling, AKA being a professional deal finder. If you're throwing your hands up and saying, Lily, I'll never be able to find a deal that good where the numbers work, you're right. If that's your attitude, there are people making thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars every single month finding good deals. Whether you're looking on market or off market, if you're doing direct mail or cold calling or whatever it might be, the art of finding good deals works in any market. And when you make it a priority to find good deals, you don't have to make it a priority to have two years of good job history, a high credit score, etc., etc., because it's like a seesaw with that hard money lender. You've got to have one or the other. And the better that one is, the less they're going to care about the other one. So how do you know when you've got that? That great deal if you're a flipper you know we we look at more the margin we're not i mean we do talk about cash on cash and our analysis talks about cash on cash but we really want to look at that margin so again you know it's, it's that base hundred thousand dollar deal and then it's got a fifty thousand dollar rehab so you you're you know so we're all in for 150. you know so if you're not making like you know 25 to 30 grand is that really a good deal because are you really, again, are you valuing your own time that you're going to put into this project to yeah. get it rehabbed and to get it ready to sell to make enough money for the time you're going to be in it? You know, yeah. again, that, that's a conversation you have to have with yourself. What is your time worth? Yeah. Um, if it's, uh, if you're a, a, a burr, a burr, I'm, I, did we just create <laughs> a, a burr? burr. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I love that we've come up with acronyms in this world for things like this. But uh, so if, if you want to burn, you want to be able to buy and hold and build a portfolio for yourself. You know, what we look for is, you know, most commercial banks are going to approve a loan, say, at about a 1.25 debt service coverage, which means that your rent divided by the debt service or I'm sorry, the rent minus um, maintenance, management, taxes, insurance divided by then the debt they're going to put on you has to be a 1.25. Basically you have to make 25% above breaking even. Right. Yeah. So we, we want to see a deal be at least at about a one-to-one -one on our analysis, because then, you know, it really comes down to what that appraisal is. Cause if you're going to burn the appraisal is what's going to determine how much money the bank will give you mm -hmm. back. Um, and so, like I said, so we just try to make sure it at least breaks even to a little better than a break even on our analysis, because again, our ARV is not very, it's not as detailed and in depth. It's, it's very much just driven by what we see in the market and what mm -hmm. we've seen with other clients. Um, you know, we've now after, uh, what, about 13 months in business, you know, we've, we've closed over 50 deals now. So we kind of have a really good idea in certain parts of town, kind of what the values are coming in at. So we just right. use that as well as, you know, we do a press upon our clients, show me the comps, you know, talk to an agent or if you're an agent yourself or you've got access to the MLS or even if you've got access to Zillow or PropStream, you know, go find some comps and, yeah. and improve to me why you think this ARV on this property is going to be X. Don't be dishonest or try to come off as more experienced than you are. Be humble, but be confident that you've put in the work to know when you've got a deal and you're willing to put in the work to make the deal work. You can raise your hand and say, hey, I don't know what you mean, or I don't understand why you got to that number. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let's talk about that. We're open, you know, that does not devalue my 
perception of you as an investor that says this is somebody who wants to get better and they're asking me these questions as their lending professional to give them good honest feedback so again that's you know what you you don't know what you don't know and if you don't ask the right questions there's a chance the thing may not work out the way you want it. In fact, starting off in one particular way can be a perfect opportunity to get your foot in the door with a hard money lender. And another thing to think about as you're as you're getting into investing is, do you have a competitive advantage? Are you a real estate agent yourself to where you can self broker the sale, which would save you some some of your that commission cost on the back end? Are you a GC or have you been in the trades to where you've got a competitive ma or construction management advantage to where you could save some costs, right? That's going to be a big, a big player and a big uh, difference maker in the offer we can make sometimes because you've got the ability to save cost somewhere in your project. Right. On that note, when I came to you guys, I think one of the competitive advantages you saw with me was that i had been wholesaling in the market that I wanted to now burr and flip in. So what's your what's your thought about like people who maybe haven't purchased for themselves yet, but have some experience wholesaling? That's a great example because uh, you are not the only wholesaler turn investor that we've had the chance to work with. Right. and grow and grow them because again they came to us after you know generating let's say you know 20 to thirty thousand in in wholesaling fees um and now they've got some cash and again you know that first deal you have to be willing to know that no financier is really going to give you 100 percent because they, they they're not going to have that comfort level quite yet with you that first deal is always going to be a little probably more expensive and probably feel a little more restrictive than what you want but just like any relationship we've got to feel each other out like i said i think wholesaling is a great place to start because one it gives you some cash that you're going to need for your first down payment and two it tells the hard money lender hey i know how to find good deals here are a few quick hitters to answer your questions before we wrap this video up remember first up rate equals risk if you're wondering how low of a rate you're going to be able to get remember that the lower the rate the lower the risk that the lender thinks you are the higher the rate the higher the risk that they think you are some ways that you can lower the perceived risk and possibly lower your rate are to put more money down to show more experience even if it's just in wholesaling and then also to find a really good deal how do you present the deal to the hard money lender so i usually type up a one page sheet with all of the details that go into making a good deal and that's something you're going to have to learn calculating arv or after repair value your rehab budget showing them your comps your projected profit the timeline that the job is going to take and so on these are things that you're going to be learning throughout the process and as you get more and more experience finding good deals you'll know what needs to be presented when presenting a deal as a first time flipper do we need to have an established entity set up in advance I actually don't know the answer to this question, but I thought I'd put it in here because it's a really good question and I think it gives each and every one of you something to call up a hard money lender and ask. So now you've all got homework. And then finally, do I still use hard money? And the answer is not typically. When I was first getting started and the only way that I could get the cash I needed was through hard money, then the 10 to 12% interest made sense. But after that, you start finding other opportunities. Like I found a private money lender and they'll typically do six to 10%. And then I was able to find more traditional bank financing and they'll do four to 5%. And so hard money isn't something that you have to stick with forever. Some people might for quick closes or just for the convenience. But for me, it was really a stepping stone between being a wholesaler getting the experience getting good deals using the hard money on a great deal that could handle the extra fees and then using that experience to go ahead and get cheaper money that i can continue to use in the future but if you want to see a breakdown of the property that i used the hard money lender on and switched from wholesaling to becoming a burr investor that video is dropping on friday so if you're watching it before then be sure to turn on post notifications and if you're not go ahead and check the link in the description because i'll post it there once the video is out in the meantime, you're going to want to check out this video that goes over four different types of financing that I've used so far. You can click the screen or links are in the description.